the meanest? Sure no. Am I the prettiest? Sure no. Am I the baddest mofo low down around this town? Sure no. Well, who am I? Sure no. Who am I? Sure no. I can't hear you. Did you see that guy? No, 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 no. Not the dude with the sunglasses. The other dude. The brother. With the straw hat on his head. That's from a movie called The Last Dragon. And it's a comedy. It's a kung fu comedy, I might add. But the running joke is that it's a kung fu movie set in Harlem, New York City. And the hero of the movie, Bruce Leroy. Yeah, Bruce Leroy dresses like an Asian man from Asia. <laughs> Hello, how are you? It is I, Jackson Vetta, and I'm not just bringing you one gameplay. Oh, no, no, no. For you people, I am bringing you two Black Ops 3 gameplays. Uh, I had a couple of gameplays on the hard drive. They were good games, but not good enough to be stand-up games by their own, so I threw them together for your view and pleasure. Anyway, back in... I was about 13, and, and that's when I started high school. And I had to, it was the first time I ever had to take the train from Queens to Brooklyn to where my high school was at. And let's just say this train, the good old G train, went through some of the most treacherous neighborhoods at the time in Brooklyn. Um, there used to be this group of three or four dudes in the morning, and they used to come by, and man, they, was, they literally were robbing people. They were kids like us, you know, maybe a little older, maybe 17, 18. But they were out there, they, they were robbing people, man. So me, I would strategically move from car to car to avoid getting robbed. But one day I was on the train, and uh, and I, let me just back up on, on this. I wasn't a big dude at the time. I mean, at that time, maybe, man, I was like 5'6", maybe 135 pounds, you know. And I knew how to handle myself, but uh, listen, man's got to know his limitations. There's no way I could have took on three or four guys by myself. So when they used to get on the train... I used to move, like I said, move from car to car to avoid it. So one day, man, I just happened to be studying something. I uh, probably studying for a test, and I forgot that they were getting on a train. So anyway, they ended up surrounding me, and they was about to, they were about to rob me. So I threw down my book bag, man, and look, yeah, you're gonna rob me, but it ain't gonna be easy, Jack. You know, so let's proceed to get this started. At that point, all I heard was. Gee and man, all I saw was a series of punches and kicks, and these dudes went flying. I mean, they bodies were dropping to the floor, man. I was like, holy, oh, what the, what is going on here? And turn around, and it was my man John, a black dude dressed like an Asian guy with the straw hat and the Chinese gi and the Chinese slippers. And uh, he happened to go to the same high school with me, and I don't know why I never noticed this guy before, <laughs> because you figured he would stand out but he turned out to be a pretty decent guy. And it was like a match made in heaven. You know, I I was scared to go to school. He knew how to fight. Seemed like a perfect match. So anyway, on the weekends, I used to go to Manhattan. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, there was a time when you wanted to play against somebody. You had to play him in person. So you had to actually go to something called an arcade where they had a series of video games that you actually had to play. Yes, next to other people. And I was pretty good at Tekken at the time, which was a fighting game, and I used to hustle that game. So Ace and I used to go all the time, so I decided to bring John along. I decided to bring John along. I think I just knocked something down. But anyway, I decided to bring John along. And needless to say, when Ace saw how John was dressed, <laughs> it didn't go too well. <laughs> I believe the first words out of Ace's mouth was like, what the fuck is this shit? So they didn't get along, which is alright, because you know what, man? Sometimes your friends aren't going to be friends themselves, you know? It's a life lesson. So, flashback to a few years later, we've all graduated high school, you know, we're all working. I was in college, I believe Ace was in college. Um, I went to this uh, local diner, and I saw John's girlfriend at the time, this young lady named Diane. And she happened to be in a diner with a gentleman that wasn't John and I really couldn't say anything to her because the woman I, with, well, I was with was not my girlfriend <laughs> so uh I didn't say anything 
Coincidentally, John and Diane broke up a few weeks later. And, you know, John took it hard. It, it was rough, you know. That was like his first real love. And uh, yeah, it's, it's always when you, when you lose your first love, it's pretty tough. Anyway, I got a phone call in the middle of the night. I would say it was a little after midnight. And I was probably unwinding. You know me, I was probably messing around on my Sega Genesis or something like that. And um, Diane calls me and she says, uh, listen, your boy John is outside my house in the bushes looking into my windows. Now, I don't want to get him arrested. So I'm going to tell you what. You come get your boy or I'm going to call the cops. I thought to myself, what? What is this man thinking? But this presented another dilemma. I can't physically restrain John. The man is a martial arts master. So I only had one recourse. I called my man Ace. I said, Ace, and I explained the situation to him. And I believe Ace's response was, you must be out of your goddamn mind. <laughs> I'm not getting involved in that. And I said, Ace, please, man. I don't want this dude to go to jail. Come on, man. Help me out. So he's like, all right, Jackson, just for you, man. Only because you're my dude, man. I'm going to help you with this. So I pick up Ace, man, and I'm driving my car. And he we drove around Diane's house like three or four times. Ace has got a flashlight sticking his head out the window with a flashlight looking around. And we can't see this dude. So I knock on Diane's door. I was like, Diane, we don't see him. She was like, he's in the bushes. And sure enough, we turn the flashlight in the bushes and two eyes pop out. And it's my man John. And he's got army camouflage on with face paint and twigs in his head and shit. Yo, dude looking crazy. And he leaps out of the bushes, scares the shit out of Ace and I. Jumps over my car, runs down the block. <laughs> so we can't find this dude. So we drive back to his house. And we're waiting for him in front of his building. But obviously, he must have went through through the back door of the building. So we knock on his door. And this dude comes to the front door with a bathrobe on like we just woke him up from sleeping. And he's like, oh, what's going on, Jackson? Uh, what's up, Ace? What's going on? We can still see the face paint around his ears. And there's still twigs and shit in his head. <laughs> Needless to say, my man Ace needed to be restrained. <laughs> anyway... If you enjoyed this story, hit that like button. If you want to hear more, subscribe. And remember, folks, life is not a game, but it is always fun to have games in your life. You take care. God dang, I got some crazy people in my life. Later, y'all.